Hey everyone, uh, Brooks Kubik and John Wood here for Dinosaur Radio, episode number seven. And today we're going to give you uh, an update about what John has been up to, what I've been up to, and a bird's eye view of some interesting strength stuff from perhaps unusual sources that we've been reading. So John, do you have anything new for the troops? Anything interesting coming out? Good strength stuff. Uh, well, the most recent thing, if you haven't seen it, we had a video on uh, a grip challenge, fingertip push-ups. Uh, you probably heard about it if you were um, joined up to this channel. Uh, and then we had a subsequent discussion about that. So if you haven't seen that, you want to check that out. Okay. Um, we got a new issue of the John Wood Report. This is number eight. Uh, so that's something you should have uh, seen by now. And uh, we've just been hard at work uh, producing all kinds of uh, new courses and information products. We've done several uh, new courses with the um, with our old school strength app. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure, will have uh, who are watching this will have seen that. We just um, have uh, some collection of old school articles. Um, that would be the first one. That's the on ramp course. We've got some Indian Club courses um and one of the things that's actually not out at the uh, at the moment but should be out fairly soon is that uh, we have another issue of the indian club training bulletin and this one will be different because instead of uh, articles which are useful but we took uh, one of the articles an old school article from i think it's 1922 and went through and took out the exercises and then i demonstrated each exercise forward and backwards and uh, so that there's video footage of the uh, the exercises themselves. So you can, if you're interested in, in Indian club training, you can follow along and uh, figure out, you know, in, you don't have to wonder what the exercises are supposed to look like. You can follow along at home. And not only that, but we went in in post-production and created motion lines for the various Indian club movements. So you see specifically where the club starts and the path that the club takes. And uh, we did a, we shot some of them and uh, slowed them down, put them in slow motion. So uh, it's intended to be a, a, a resource to where you know exactly what the exercises are supposed to look like. So I think that's something that people will be real interested in. Yeah, I, I saw that and um, I thought, I'm referring to the Indian, Indian Club video. I thought that was really interesting and really useful because a lot of the old courses, they have diagrams and sometimes, you know, they have motion lines and with the intricate club moves, you know, you know, the lines are going like this mm -hmm. and you're trying to follow it and you're like, what are they doing? How are you doing that? Um, and you do a real good job of explaining that in a simple format mm -hmm. using modern video technology. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and I gained a newfound respect for a lot of the old school courses and whatnot because they're trying to explain certain movements just using the written word without the benefit of the video or or moving pictures or anything like that. So uh, I understand what they went through a hundred years ago when they were writing some of this these books yes. and courses. Yes, absolutely. I'm absolutely convinced that film was discovered solely to facilitate the transfer of physical training information. I mean, why else would they do it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, well, that's that's pretty good. So, um, real quickly, um, the John Wood report. This is issue number eight. Yeah, that that's one? correct. Yep. Okay. So, issue number eight is coming out. It's been a while since we've had an issue out, but um, I've seen it. I was I was kind of a beta tester for it. Um, it's a good issue, a real strong one. And if I had to summarize the theme, I think the theme would be. Wherever you are, whatever you have, get it done. Um, with some real interesting ways to use very simple, very inexpensive things that you can purchase. Not, not training things, but some interesting things to purchase, to use in your training, that can really take it up a notch, take it up to the next level. So I thought it was very good from that. Uh, no, that means a lot coming from you, Brooks. Thank you, thank you. So good stuff. Um, you are probably about to ask me what I've been up to. That is correct. 
And the answer is, um, I've been working on the May issue of the Dinosaur Files, the uh, monthly strength training newsletter that I do. Um, I'm also uh, working on some other courses that'll be coming out soon. But from the Dinosaur Files per perspective, May issue is going to start out by doing a deep dive into uh, specialization training. Uh, the why and how of specializing on a particular lift or exercise or a particular body part or muscle group, um, how to tie it into training the rest of the body without overdoing things. Uh, real interesting article on intensity enhancing techniques so that your specialization training doesn't have to necessarily be about doing more exercises or different exercises or increasing the volume, more sets, more reps, more whatever. It's how to really maximize the effectiveness of the exercises that you're doing to hit whatever muscle group you're targeting or to work whatever exercise you want to target all the harder. So that alone is a very valuable article, I think. And to put everything together to show people how to, you know, how to put a specialization program together um, we've got an arm specialization program and uh, a back specialization program, um, both of which are multi-stage programs. So you really get, gosh, I don't know, probably six, seven, eight workouts between those two articles alone. Uh, we have a good article on uh, a unique uh, weight loss exercise and weight loss program. Mm -hmm. Very interesting article on old school diet and nutrition. Um, really interesting diet, one that I've been following that's been working very well for me, both in terms of building muscle mass and um, losing unwanted fat. So it's kind of like a, a two for one deal. Um, and an article updating uh, an interesting piece of old school equipment that is also a modern piece of equipment. That's the bull worker, uh, which I never used when it came around the first time when I was a kid, but I've been using a lot lately at the recommendation of a number of uh, of other older dinosaurs and um, having a lot of fun with it. So I've covered that. And uh, all in all, it's a, you know, it's a good strong article or a good strong newsletter with uh, a lot of fun stuff. So that's uh, the April Dinosaur Files in PDF format. You can find it at my website, brookscubic.com. Mm -hmm. Well, so, and Brooks, I do want to commend you for doing a monthly newsletter since, was it 1997 that you started the Dinosaur Files? It was. It was. And you and there's been some some twists and turns along the way, but you've been pretty consistent since then. That's 20, 24 years and change. And uh, for somebody that has a several publications on on my own, uh, I can sympathize and and certainly uh, want to make people aware that that's an as impressive as a four hundred pound bench press, if not more, uh, to have been as consistent as you have been with your uh, newsletter publication. Well, thank you. Now it's, you know, it takes a lot of work to get to a 400 pound bench press, but mm -hmm. it also takes a lot of work to put out a monthly training article. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm not training article, I'm, a monthly article is hard work anyway, mm -hmm. but a monthly newsletter, you know, full 20 or 20 plus pages is, um, you know, that's a challenge. That's a very steep challenge. Interesting thing, the good thing about it is that if you have something that you're doing, if you're trying something new, you can report on it in, almost in real world time. And you can update it. And if you find a way to do it better, you can report on that. And you don't have to wait to put a book together and publish a book. You don't have to wait to put a course together and get a course out. It's just bang, here it is. Here's what I'm doing in June. Here's what I'm doing in July. Here's some changes I made in October. Made some more changes in December and February. We're trying something a little different. In March, look at the results from everything we've been doing. And now we're gonna put a cherry on top and, and make it really interesting. You know, so it's a good way to, to update people and keep people abreast of the latest developments, if you will. You know, the latest findings, the latest things that people can try in their own training. So I think that's a really strong thing. And um, hopefully you'll be getting the, uh, the John Wood report out fairly regularly and, um, you know, or, or maybe even monthly. And um, that'd be a pretty cool thing.
that'll be one of the goals and I, and I got some ideas for for making that happen so I think that that's that will be uh, something to look forward to um, but also before I forget it maybe uh, at some point we do a, a a podcast specifically on the dino files and you know the early days and and what you were doing then and the production and and printing and the challenges that you faced then because really the dino files have spanned the the, the different eras of strength training i mean the last almost three decades of uh, there's been some very radical changes as far as the strength world and so i think it'd be really interesting to hear how things were going in the, the early days and how the processes work what the state of the art was back then versus where we are today yeah that's a good idea yeah i'll make a note of that that that's, um will definitely be something to cover cool so the um the other thing that um, that I'd like to update people on is this. Have you been doing any interesting reading, strength reading or otherwise, that you want to update people on? I just have a few recommendations, just some stuff that I picked up uh, that I can say, hey, this I found this of interest and maybe you will too. But first one is is this one. Ken yeah. Shamrock book, Shamrock, Jonathan Snowden. Um, I was there for some portions of this. Ken Shamrock actually trained with my dad back in uh, the fall of 1996 for the, the ultimate ultimate. And uh, so I was a, an observer to some of the stuff that was covered in the book. And uh, as far as uh, um, biographies of, of, I guess you could call it old wrestlers and MMA, guys i thought that the, it definitely covered everything warts and all but it was well written and mm -hmm. i enjoyed it and i thought it was something that a, a lot of our public has a similar interest and they would probably check it out too cool and yeah. and ken actually has a new uh podcast on his website i think kenshamrock.com which i've listened to he's actually really good as far as uh, the stuff that he's putting out so that's that's definitely another resource to to follow up on very cool very cool so any other uh, resources for things for people to read? Uh, well, here's just, here's a blast from the past. And you actually, it's one that you had mentioned, although I owned a copy anyway, uh, but it, it's worth looking into just on a regular basis. But uh, the book, uh, Art of Expressing Human Body, um, mm -hmm. of Bruce Lee, uh, written by John Little or, or compiled by John Little. And uh, Bruce Lee's a fascinating character. He had some very good training ideas and so it's, it's it, how that turned out was was unfortunate as I'm sure people are familiar with but uh, it's good to know um, where he was coming from what what the processes were mm -hmm. in his mind and actually here we are many years later and a lot of the things that he was on board with on the same wavelength with uh, we're still using and we're still experimenting with and we're still benefiting from so it just goes to show you that that uh, when you find somebody that really understands what's going on, and then um, you want to you want to look that up. You want to mm -hmm. research that as much as you can. So, and a lot of that is stuff that I've been familiar with anyway. But I think that it's beneficial for anybody to um, just have a refresher on some things. Sometimes I'll I'll flip through certain books I've read a hundred times. I can absolutely say that I've I've uh, dog-eared the my copy of Dinosaur Training, and I'm sure a lot of people will say the same because there's just so much good information in there. And um, and sometimes there's things that for whatever reason, they slip your mind and you're like, oh, I forgot all about that exercise. I should I should do that next time I train. So I think that's just a good a good practice. The, uh, the Art of Expressing the Human Body is a fascinating book. Um, I used it as the springboard for doing an article about uh, similarities between Bruce Lee's training and dinosaur style training in the March issue, March 21 uh, issue of the Dinosaur Files. Um, it's really interesting. Some of the, you know, some of the things that he was doing back in the early and mid 60s that you know, a lot of people think are cutting edge, you know, revolutionary there. They're like, oh my God, this is great. Well, yeah, it's great. And Bruce Lee was doing it, you know, back in the day. And one interesting thing about the book, um, John Little lists a 
bunch of books and courses and manuals and publications that Bruce Lee had in his personal library. Mm -hmm. and he was a, a student of old time strength training. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, wow, that's really interesting, particularly if you realize, you know, back in the 60s, there was no internet. And finding old time strength stuff was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting that, that he took the time to do that. Um, but it's, it's a great book, highly recommended. And then also to add a, a footnote to that, and I didn't realize this at the time, but if you look at that list of titles that are in Bruce Lee's library or were in Bruce Lee's library, the stuff that he found of value that he learned from that he studied, a good percentage of them are, are uh, available in the Iron League that we've already posted them in the Iron League or made them available in other ways. Uh, the Complete Physique was one of them. Uh, Modern Bodybuilding were the, uh, two books that we put on Kindle. Um, and then we've got some other, a whole bunch of other titles that Bruce Lee was interested in. So this was pure happenstance. This isn't something that I referenced beforehand, but it also just goes to show that people with a common interest kind of um, attr are attracted to very similar uh, topics. Yes, absolutely. So, any other books to share? Uh, that's it for now. I think maybe at some point we could do a, a more dedicated show on just some other things apart from the strength training that we have either read or listened to or, mm -hmm. or uh, found of interest. But uh, I think that I'll, I'll, to keep it short, I'll just keep it at those two okay. and, uh, and go from there. Well, I've got a couple things that I've been reading. I usually read like, you know, five or six different things at the same time. I'm not sure why, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but one is an old book by, um, O.S. Martin, who wrote An Iron Will, among other great titles. And this one is called Do It to a Finish. And the whole theme of the book is if you're going to do something, do it right. And once you start something, finish it, which is pretty good advice for life in general, but particularly for um, strength training. Um, I found a copy of Henry Wittenberg's book, Isometrics, Instant Exercise. Uh, Wittenberg was an Olympic gold medal wrestling champion. And I mean, an incredibly strong, powerful, rugged man who later in life um, wrote this great, very popular best-selling book on isometrics. So that's an interesting find and I thought pretty cool book. Um, Latest issue of the New Yorker magazine, uh, May 10, 21 issue, has a book review called The Final Workout. Mm. And it's about a woman who's a tiny petite woman who's a graphic designer who is totally into strength and health. And I'm talking about like serious strength training and she's written a book. Uh, her name is Allison Bechdel, B-E-C-H-D-E-L. She's written a book called The Secret to Superhuman Strength. And just talking about her lifelong journey to develop and possess superhuman strength. And I'm like, man, I never expected to see that in the New Yorker. Um, so, that's interesting. I'm, I'm going to have to find a copy of that book because, you know, strength information comes from unsuspected places. Mm. And the, uh, the final one, I'm showing my age here, but um, this is the uh, AARP Bulletin, the very last issue of the uh, ARP Bulletin that just came out. It's the live stronger, stronger, better, or live longer, stronger, better issue. And, you know, I picked it up and I was flipping through and um, it has exercise al fresco. If you can see this, mm -hmm. all about going to the park and exercising out in the park. Um, the outside edge workout using playground equipment, chin-up bars, 
a convenient tree, resistance bands, and I'm, you know, isometrics, calisthenics, and I'm thinking to myself, man, they have been reading what you and I have been talking about for the last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, so I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, for the record, I am a card carrying member of AARP. That explains the, the gray hair. It's not teenagers, it's, uh, it's the other. But um, yeah, you find interesting strength stuff everywhere. And the things that, that we're doing that we've been reading about that back in Bruce Lee's day were so hard to find are rapidly becoming mainstream, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it, back in uh, the early part of January, we did a, a show. It was the second issue of the Dinosaur Radio podcast going into the, or the new, new year had just begun. And we devoted it to how to uh, start this year, make this year the best year ever, uh, talking about resolutions, talking about goals, and beginning the year on a strong note. Uh, actually, I want to cut this this episode short, so we just go for a couple more minutes. But uh, just briefly, just real briefly in a, a few minutes, how has your training been for your year so far? It's been great. Um, I've been doing um, all isometric workouts for almost a year now, which started as an experiment and has just become a really fun thing to be doing, um, exploring all kinds of different isometrics. Um, you know, and anybody who says isometrics are easy um, is misinformed mm -hmm. uh, or not doing the kind of isometrics that I'm doing because they're hard as heck. They're a form of overload training. I mean, you know, think about it. If you're trying to curl 200 pounds and your maximum weight in the curl for one rep is 150, well, that 200 pounds is an overload. You may be able to move it a little bit, you may be able to hold it for a couple seconds, but you're not gonna be able to complete a full range rep. You're gonna fight and fight and fight. You're doing an isometric. And you know there are ways to do that with weights or without weights. And basically you achieve an overload effect very quickly in any exercise you do. So that's what I've been doing and having, um, having great fun with it loving the portability of the isometric uh, training equipment. And you know what it does is it lets me literally go to the beach, which is three miles away. And uh, you know we walk over to the beach and set up shop somewhere nice and quiet out in the sand, um, find a convenient uh, log that's been washed ashore and you know, use that to set my workout journal down on and you know, just bang, there we are off and running, off and going. Just lost my pen. I got so excited about it. And um, you know, been been doing good stuff. So you've been doing some fun training stuff. Yep, yep, I have. Uh, I'm just doing a lot of the stuff that really uh, hasn't really changed a whole lot as far as what I've been writing about in some of my newsletters and emails and and stuff like that. So uh, you know, you can check out some videos and and newsletters to see what the specifics. But one thing I do want to mention. Uh, that I actually haven't d discussed before is that one of my goals for a, a given year is to do at least 10 minutes on a rowing machine. I've got a, an, an erg, an ergometer, concept two ergometer, and then I also have the ski erg, which is a slightly different variation. And so my goal in a given year is to do 10 minutes a day, ideally for the entire year. Now I know I'm not going to make it the whole year, uh, but back in 2018, my record was um, 120 days. I made the first four months of the year, and then we went on vacation to a wedding. And unfortunately, I had to break the streak then. Uh, but this year, I'm, I'm happy to report that uh, that streak is ongoing. So since cool. uh, January 1st, uh, I've, I've done at least 10 minutes a day um, since then, since January 1st. Um, some days I'll do other some of the other races, a half hour or 5K or 6K or whatever the case the case might be. But um, but as of today, um, yeah, I've been uh, haven't missed a day yet. So um, see how far it can go. So that's been at least 10 minutes of rowing every day, every day of the year. So far. In addition to everything else you've been doing. That's on top of everything else. Yep. All the other strength training. Yep. 
And that it did, you know, because rowing is cardio work and cardio work does all kinds of bad things to your body and runs you down and destroys you. Your weight is now, I'm sure, really low. I mean, you don't look anywhere for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I what couldn't. Are you doing, John? Yeah, I'm, I'm 260 plus and uh, I couldn't possibly, you know, I must, because I'm doing cardio, uh, I must be overtrained and I must exactly. be you know, cannibalizing all the, the muscle that I possess. So, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah, and anybody who weighs 260 plus um, is obviously not doing something that is uh, causing them to shrink. Yeah, so, and, and the, I mean, really the, the number that I'm concerned with and, and one of the things, aside from all the other benefits, uh, is, uh, is really uh, cholesterol. I mean, to me, that's like, where that is, is, is the, the salient factor. But, uh, and, and it seems to me, I don't know where, where my levels are right now. I'll know soon when I have a, uh, get a, a physical, but um, the goal is, is as low as possible, obviously. And, you know, when, and I, and I don't want to get too far into it, but eventually when you get to be a, a mature lifter, uh, there's some other numbers besides your bench and your squat that you really need to start paying close attention to. Yeah, the name of the game is strength and health. Yeah. Not strength, period. Yep. Very cool. Cool. Well, why don't we um, sign off now? I know we're going to be back with another episode pretty soon and uh, let people enjoy that. But for now, uh, John Wood Report, uh, the new strength app, uh, May issue of the Dinosaur Files. Uh, keep watching us on, uh, on YouTube and more to come. All right. Sounds good.